comfortable and starting to feel like you know you're you're, you're in the right place? Um, yes, I'm starting to feel a little better about it. I'm not quite as nervous. How did you feel about your performance in there tonight? I mean, you ended up with some pretty one-sided scores in there. How did you feel that you performed? I thought, I mean, I like to be extremely critical of myself, so I always think I should be able to, I can do better, more work. What do you think you could have done better? I mean, are there instant things that you feel like you should have done differently? Um, I have to go back and watch, but I like to be really like, critical of myself. How did you feel you performed with Joe Rogan afterwards? I'm sure that was probably the biggest, that was probably more fearful than uh, getting in the cage for you. Uh, yes, sir. It was also really neat to see it, meet him in person for the like, first time speaking to him. It's pretty cool. Can you tell me what was going through your head at the moment you had to go get on the microphone in the, in, in the center of the cage? Um, it's different. That was the first time I've had to do that since I've been in the UFC. Right. Well, we've all been sitting back here just waiting to hear the famous Hannah Cyphers trash talk. I mean, we know <laughs> that you bring the heat, you know, more than Mazidal, more than Diaz, you know. Th throw it out there. Let's let's give us the best trash talk that, that you got. We, we've been waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but seriously, you know, I, I'm curious, how do you feel like your career will progress? I mean, I'm sure you see the, the business side of this. People that talk, those are the ones that get the opportunities, right? And it's clear that you don't want to talk if you don't have to. So, how do you pick your next challenge? How do you move your career forward? I just like to be competitive with myself and just let my hard work show. And then everything else that comes with it just happens to. I don't want to have to. Last thing for me, what, what would you like to see next? I mean, is there a, a date you want to fight for at the end of the year? Is there a location, an opponent? What, what would be next for you? Um, I would kind of like to stay like stateside for as long as I could because I don't really like fun overly much. <laughs> But I would like to fight before the end of the year if possible, but that's still entirely up to the UFC. But. And what if they say Korea is the only spot we got for you? Then it would be up to them, but I mean, still. It's entirely up to them, really. <laughs> Did you meet Dana White backstage? I uh, guess it was pretty cool. Is that the first time you've met him? Um, other than like, like face-offs and stuff, yes. What did he say to you? Uh, he just told me a good job. It was really cool to get to meet him. But. What do you say about talking to us that makes you so nervous? I'm not a real big talker at all, anyway. Uh, are you worried that you're building a little bit of a fan base, though? Because people like that you're not copying what other people are doing. You're you, and you're embracing that. And have you noticed that support for who you are? Um, I guess somewhat. My family and my train partners and stuff back home are really supportive of me, and that's matters a lot, mostly to me. It looked like you had a lot of fun this week. I saw you taking photos with you know, Daniel Cormier and a lot of other fighters. And even in the cage tonight, you looked like you were having a lot of fun. Is that accurate? Or are you getting you know, more comfortable as, as you're in your third UFC fight? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I, try to, I, I really enjoy the fighting part, and I just try to make sure that I'm enjoying it. That's, that's why I like to do it. If it weren't for that, then it wouldn't be worth it. Does that give you a bit of confidence, you know, being on a card like this, and that you're, you know, you're a mainstay in the UFC now, and you're on a, the same card as like a Daniel Cormier? Does that, does that kind of help you out when you go into a fight like this, just being like, I belong here? Um, I'm working to where I, I mean, I want to be able to belong here, but it's just really cool for me to actually be around them, like people I watch and stuff. So it's, yeah. it's really cool. How are you going to celebrate today? Um, I might go out of, out of the way and eat like a large, large chocolate milkshake this time. <laughs> Can I get a large? Yeah. <laughs> I like chocolate. My favorite yeah. whipped cream. Uh, must. Do you have a message for all the Hand Cypher fans who just love the way you bring it? Um, just, I guess, thank you for all the support. It's much appreciated. Is it back to the chores on Monday, you know, the farm and everything like that? Is it, is it right back to business, like, like nothing happened this week? Pretty much, since, yeah. I feel, since I feel good. Yes. But, but you like that though, it almost makes you balance in a way, you know, appreciating what you have and everything like that. Like it's, you know, for some fighters, they, they change when they get in the UFC, but it seems like you're, you know, the same, the same person. Yeah, I don't want to change, I want to just be who I am. And people like me or don't like me, then it's not only, it's just, it's me. Do you think about the future of like being a champion? I mean, do you think like, is that scary to you? I mean, the, the media obligations would increase. You'd have to be up there on dais in front of press conference. You know, they'd ask more of you. Does that, does any part of that scare you? Um, it makes me feel nervous to think about it, but I would like to, for my skill set, like hard work to put me there one day. It would be really nice. I think I could work that hard. Make me happy. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.